Why, hello, Brandon. Hello, cat. Hello, hello. Mr. King. Welcome to the cafe. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so this is a, a big old commercial grinder. Yes, this All right. is uh, the new entry level home grinder. No. <laughs> for your uh, entry level home, yes, I guess. Yes, for, for my entry level. For the people that do 40 pounds of coffee a day at home, <laughs> exactly. this is your entry level machine. Got um, it. No, we are doing a uh, commercial bulk coffee grinder. So okay. we're actually getting on the drip coffee side. Uh, right. This is made by Curtis, a uh, brand that we carry. Um, this is called the Curtis GSG mm -hmm. 3BLK because I really wanted to make it long for the invoices. <laughs> <laughs> Um, basically, and I never understand it, they call it 3BLK because it stands for 3 pound hopper, but the hopper hole is actually about 2.5 pounds, we just kind of okay. round it up. And it's BLK because it's black? BLK because it's black. They do make it in a red as well. Um, oh, fancy. That would change the skew to R-E-D. Got it. 3. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, it's a very simple machine actually. This is what you typically see at most of your coffee shops. A lot of people are going to be familiar inside the grocery store, you're going to mm -hmm. see this in that coffee aisle. Um, there's not a lot to it. It is a bulk coffee grinder, it's designed to grind a lot of coffee, basically, a uh, uh, pound of coffee every 30 seconds, wow. so it's very, very fast. Uh, not a lot of options as far as where you're going because it's mainly designed for drip, but we go all the way to French press off to the coarse side. Goes to what's called an espresso grind on the right side, but it's not, it does do espresso, but it's, it'd almost be like having a one step, stepped espresso grinder. So, okay. not a lot of options there. You so, really wouldn't go that far. So, in your espresso, that it would work for maybe like a pressurized portafilter? Pressurized. Kind of um, a lot of places will use these for like a decaf because they do one decaf a day. So, yeah. they'll, they'll use it. It's good enough. It gets by. Okay. Um, primarily, though, Chemex is you're going to use it. Um, again, French presses. It's very easy. It's just a, Nice little turn. Okay. So that's why you see it a lot of cafes. Very easy, very quick. Um, it's start and stop basically, but it does have a little hidden safety that's behind there. So if I hit it right now, it's nothing not happens. Work. Okay. Hit it now, starts running. Okay. And so you have to have a basket up in there. You have to have or something. something. Okay. Your, your finger, your basket, or something along those lines. Or a bag if you were doing that kind of thing. Yep. And that's primarily why you see that. So you can actually take the bag, if I can open one. And you can actually you. stick it right underneath it, like so. I see. So. <clears throat> and now it's engaged, and so now when you hit the start, now it's my start and stop. It's just as long as I go, right? It just yep. goes. There's, till there's no timing on it. Okay. Um, again, it's a bulk, so you could throw two and a half pounds inside of here, put something underneath it. It's just going to keep running. Until it's and done. You can see right now, no beans are inside of it. It's just mm -hmm. running and running and running. I'm not that tall. We have no clue what's going to be on the video right now. <laughs> Do you know what kind of burrs are in there? Uh, they are flat burrs. Okay. Um, they're, they, they last forever. They're actually good for 40,000 pounds of coffee. Wow. Um, I want to say it's 83 millimeter. It might okay. be 84 millimeter. No. Right around there. So, yeah. And they're um, stainless steel, metal? They are stainless steel, yep. Okay. They're basically, they're right through here. If I were to actually take off these screws, mm -hmm. pull this off, that's where the burrs are. So they're okay. about that wide behind okay. there. Um, very easy to service. So and so the, are they... Out. Are they face like this yep. versus they're horizontal they're they're vertical wow when you start getting into bulk so we're okay. doing lots of stuff we really got to keep that heat out okay when you take those flat burrs and go flat with them like an espresso grinder mm -hmm. it has to throw that coffee out whereas here it's a gravity fed okay so we're really trying to keep up with the flow rate a consistent flow rate straight down okay um, which is why you'll see those burrs stand straight up and down so got it. it hits comes right down we don't have to run a huge rpm to actually make that happen that's why you can run these things for 15 minutes straight so um, let's see some different grinds on it, huh? Let's do it. So All we right. are going to start with just a drip. Um, I've got some prepared right here, actually. So the way you would see it basically in a cafe setting, this is how you would do it. We've got 3.2 ounces of beans labeled out. Okay. I'm going to take it. I'm going to dump it. And I'm going to do it the way I like to do it. So you can stick this right inside there. You can pop that up. And then we can just... I could probably be a little less gentle with that. <laughs> um, All right. But that's it. So then you're there. I got a little grind behind there. I'm, okay. I don't do this often. <laughs> what? And this you would be able to just slide it right in. And you're good to go. Yep. So that was the, that was kind of in between the fine and auto. Yep. I, I went a little more to the fine side there. On that one, I, I probably could back it off. 
Um, not to get too much into it, but I, I do a pulse brew on there so it can actually okay. be a little more fine. Uh, we could take it back to about there. That's typically where you'll see it on a drip. It's going to be a little more coarse than what we've got going on here. So um, what can you show me? Uh, can we take it up to the finest and see what that looks like? Let's do it. We're going to go to espresso. Uh, let's just do... Let me grab something to catch that fish real quick. Look at you in your dirty room back here. That's okay. <laughs> We're just looking for a ground. We're not drinking this stuff, right? <laughs> so let's do this. That's probably a little much. Right? Yeah. It was more than I thought when I poured it in. <laughs> it is pretty, um, it's got uh, some chunks to it, I yep. guess. So, really fine. Yeah. We can actually take, if you just want to see for comparison. Let's... You see the difference? That's out yeah. of an espresso grinder. Yeah. So it's fine, it's a very powdery. Um, like I said, it would it would work adequately in an espresso grind. It's it's nicely consistent though. Yep, very consistent. Um, can you show me the coarsest that it's at? Let's do it. I'm going to do less coffee this time. Why? Well, because uh, I did a lot last <laughs> time. And that little experiment took a little longer than I thought it would. Let's, let's see if I have any. But so, you, could you have just stopped it right then? Or do you have to grind everything that's in there? So you, you can, but you, you always have to remember on grinders. If I would have stopped it there and tried mm -hmm. to restart it, it probably would have bound it up. Okay. Um, I would have to open it all the way coarse. Okay. So theoretically, you know, again, this thing really is designed for grind what you put in. Got it. Okay. Um, so you're not letting the hopper hang out. You're no. not putting a bunch of coffee in the hopper. Yeah. And, in, okay. In a real setting, you're not going to do what I did, unmeasured. Yeah. Because you have no clue how many ounces, how many grams yeah. that actually is. Okay. I just did that for fun. Woohoo! So let's do coarse, and I'm going to do less this time. There we go. Let's do that. What do I have to... <laughs> pour this into. Let's Can you just, just catch right it on, on the paper? Here. We're going to see how good my skills are. Oops. Do you need me to... And I, you always want to, uh, you know, in a setting we'd run a little bit through because you can kind of see some of that fine which was still hanging yeah. out there at the bottom. Um, so I'll just eliminate that side there but we can see the course. And it's fairly consistent for yep. for being so coarse. I'll give it that. <laughs> Cat agrees. Mm. That is a. That's what everybody's looking for, right? That is a seal, right That's there. That's what Brandon's always looking for. My approval. I always try so hard, <laughs> but it never comes. I know. I gotta keep you working for it. That's okay. So the nice part, though, is that it's very easily adjustable. Okay. Mm -hmm. All this is basically it's a little hidden thing that's just turning effectively. See that nut right there? Yeah. That's actually all we're turning. Oh, okay. So if I wasn't happy, let's say I wanted to go more coarse than that, if you get the camera underneath, you can see there's these two little screws right underneath there. There's one on that side and one over here. Oh, and you could tweak it even more. I could just loosen that, and then I can turn this nut to wherever I wanted to. So if I wanted to go more coarse than this, oh. I can. All I'd have to do is loosen, turn, go. But you can't do that for the fine side? I could go more fine than that oh, as well. Okay. There is a limitation, of course, once you, Yeah, they're, they're sticking touching. together. Theoretically, where I set this, I calibrated it, so if I went just a little further, they would actually be touching each other. Okay. So I don't have much more fine to go. Mm -hmm. Coarseness, though, I, I have a lot more to go if I wanted to. Um, but it is set so that, because again, you want to keep it so these numbers actually mean something. Yeah. Auto drip, that's the reason that we set it to burst touching right here, is that is where we normally get an auto drip. I see. If I were to open it up and make it more coarse, that would then almost Not be mean. a French press. Yeah. Um, okay. But for places trying to do a lot of French presses that maybe want a little different option there, they can open it up. So it's very universal. Cool. All right. The Curtis GSG 3BLK. 3BLK. Woo! It's a 120 machine. Does not come in 220. Okay. Um, it's a regular plug. Um, easy to use. Easy, simple, lasts forever. All right. For a very long time. Thank you, Brandon. Thanks, Kat.